In this video I'm going to discuss the radiology of left upper lobe collapse. On the normal chest radiograph the left upper lobe occupies a large volume and represents a significant area of the frontal chest x-ray. In fact most of what you see over the left lung field is comprised of the left upper lobe albeit overlapping the left lower lobe. Here is the oblique fissure and the area shaded in blue represents the left upper lobe. When the left upper lobe collapses, either due to an extrinsic mass lesion compressing the left upper lobe bronchus or an endobronchial lesion such as a neoplasm, the left upper lobe collapses towards the mediastinum and towards the anterior chest wall. The other thing that happens is that the hilum is displaced and goes upwards due to the volume loss. And as a result, the left lower lobe hyperexpands to occupy the vacated space as the left upper lobe collapses towards the anterior chest wall and towards the mediastinum. This is an example. You've got the increased density of the collapsed lobe. The incident beam is virtually perpendicular to the interface and therefore you don't see the interface on the PA film. Note that there is some volume loss and note also that as the left upper lobe collapses in an extreme fashion the volume becomes so low that the apical segment of the left lower lobe now hyperexpands and abuts the aortic knuckle, allowing the aortic knuckle to be seen. And this can be demonstrated on the lateral view. Here's the aortic knuckle. And the reason why you see the aortic knuckle is because as the X-ray beam hits the interface between the aortic knuckle and the left lower lobe, you can actually see the interface. So this is a complete left upper lobe collapse. And on the lateral, you can see the oblique fissure has moved and this solid area here is the collapse of the left upper lobe. The asterisk just reminds us that the aortic knuckle is seen because the collapse has gone beyond the area where the left lower lobe abuts the aortic knuckle, allowing it to be seen on the PA film. Here is a second case. Again, you can see the aortic knuckle because the apical segment of the left lower lobe now abuts the aortic knuckle, allowing the interface to be seen. You can see increased density from the top to the middle to the bottom. You've lost the left heart border because the left upper lobe collapses towards the anterior chest wall and towards the mediastinum. So the incident beam is perpendicular to the interface. But on the lateral, the incident beam is tangential to the interface. And you can see the oblique fissure has shifted. This is producing a wedge of tissue, uh, a little dissimilar to the previous case, but enough to allow the aortic knuckle to now be adjacent to the aerated left lower lobe, allowing the aortic knuckle to be seen. So the asterisk again reminds me that the aortic knuckle is seen because there's complete left upper lobe collapse. It's gone so far anteriorly that you're now able to see the aortic knuckle as it interfaces with the expanded left lower lobe. Here is a CT of that patient. The left upper lobe collapses anteriorly. So as the incident beam hits the left upper lobe collapse, it does so without causing the interface to be seen. This explains why the left heart border is obscured. As you 
go more posteriorly, you can see that the aortic knuckle is now sitting next to a rated lung, allowing it to be seen on the PA film. This is the PET scan of that same patient. You will notice that on the CT movie there was an enlarged aortopulmonary window lymph node. Here is the central tumour seen on the PET scan. Here is the lymph node and here is the left upper lobe collapse. Note also that the PET scan gives us extra information. In this case there is PET activity in the supraclavicular lymph node. Here is a third case showing a left upper lobe collapse. You can just see the aortic knuckle and there's a hint of a mass lesion which is causing this increased veil-like opacity on the PA film. You can clearly see that there is some volume loss and some mediastinal shift. On the lateral view you can see the interface of the collapsed left upper lobe and the hyperexpanded left lower lobe. Note also that there's a missing rib, left six rib is missing, and you can see the incomplete border sign signifying that there is an extra pleural mass lesion destroying the rib and causing this incomplete border sign. The CT of the same patient, here is the collapsed left upper lobe, this is on a more cranial slice. Here is the central tumour which is causing the left upper lobe collapse. And at this point you can see that the rib is destroyed and there is a soft tissue, extra pleural mass lesion. This explains why the medial aspect of this lesion is sharp and the lateral aspect is blurred. Simply because the incident beam is tangential to the interface at this point, causing a sharp margin, and the incident beam is virtually perpendicular to the soft tissue mass at this point, causing a blurred margin. So in summary, a left upper lobe collapse is almost always due to a neoplasm, either an extrinsic neoplasm or an endobronchial neoplasm. In an ITU setting, it could be due to a mucus plug, and in children and asthmatics, you need to think about mucus plug. In over 45-year-olds who smoke, an endobronchial lesion is the most likely cause of any lobar collapse. Because the left upper lobe is large, it causes a significant volume loss. You get upward shift of the hilum, and on the PA film, this collapsed left upper lobe is represented as a veil that's coming down from the apex towards the hilum. You do see the interface of the solid left upper lobe, which is collapsed, with the aerated hyperexpanded left lower lobe when seen on the lateral view.